what support has actually been needed for humans to exist in space, either orbiting a planet or a moon, or on a voyage to another star system? Well, there are some obvious requirements such as food, power, oxygen, water, and other essentials to life. However, also things like a reasonable level of gravity and protection are also needed for humans to function in the long term. This first part we're going to consider some of the key needs of the habitat near to our sun, not much further out than our Earth. Now taking what seems to be one of the most vital requirements first, water. Now whilst it's possible to create water from hydrogen and oxygen, or to harvest it from comets or other objects in space, it's an extremely energy intensive or hazardous procedure to undertake. Therefore, a key function would be to recycle 100% of the habitat's water. And while this at first may seem a relatively easy procedure with things like human waste, there are some chemicals which are extremely difficult to remove from water. So either efficient methods must be utilised to remove these, or steps must be taken to prevent any kind of water contamination in the first place. Now food and oxygen, of course, are inextricably linked in any kind of habitat. Whilst it's possible to artificially create carbon and oxygen in carbon dioxide and separate them out, this process does require the input of substantial amounts of heat energy into some form of regenerative carbon dioxide removal system. So whilst this system should be available in emergencies, it isn't a long-term practical solution. And since we also have to feed the people in the habitat, Really, we have to look towards photosynthesis as the ideal mechanism for recycling the oxygen, which of course will at the same time provide a food source. But again, we run into some massive problems here, because of the sheer mass of biological matter that's needed both to convert the carbon dioxide back into oxygen and also to provide enough food for a human being. This is because it takes the equivalent of eight mature trees to produce enough oxygen to keep one human being alive. This is without taking into account anything else that might be using up the oxygen such as bacteria or chemical processes needed to keep the station operating properly. This of course doesn't mean that huge forests will have to be grown, but large areas, possibly stacked or layered growing plants for food and oxygen would be required. These areas are likely to be the largest part of any habitat which will seriously constrain their actual design. Of course, with a large area of plants growing, you're also going to run into the next issue, power. Now in a location at a similar distance from the sun that our Earth is, then what additional powers may be needed for growing plants or other needs could be obtained by supplementing direct solar rays by solar panels. It's because being outside the Earth's atmosphere, more of the light and other radiation from the sun will reach the habitat, resulting in far more power being generated per solar panel than would otherwise be the case. However, being that close to the sun brings us to the next issue of protection. Without the shelter we normally get from atmosphere, prolonged exposure to the fluctuations of the sun's output without significant shielding of some kind would doom all the inhabitants. Now ideally you'd want something that was transparent, that will let light in, but also something good to adjust as the cosmic rays change, something you have on board also for another purpose mean that you haven't had to have extra weight or space. It's possible you could use clear polymers for the outer walls of a sandwich, then pump water in between the polymer layers to give you a flexible level of protection that you'll require. Polymers would also give you the protection from micrometeorites and dust which would otherwise puncture the skin of the habitat. Finally this part is the issue of heat and it isn't the one you might expect. Surrounding the vessel is a vacuum, or a near vacuum. And despite space being very cold, very little heat will be taken away. And because one side of the habitat will be constantly exposed to the sun, the habitat will get very warm. So you'll need some form of heat exchanger and form of air circulation method will be employed, which may be assisted by the water being pumped around the walls of the habitat.